the revelation of Dan and Ephraim. We're going to have to take that in two parts. Um, it's a little longer than I can do it in one presentation. And therefore, we're going to do it this Sabbath and the next. Um, the revelation of Dan and Ephraim. I, I want to... Uh, I want to have a word of prayer as usual before we open up the word. Our Heavenly Father, please come down and fill our hearts with your presence and your grace. Help us to understand you better and help us to serve you with all of our heart, our soul, our strength. Be with us, O Lord, and may your Holy Spirit give us the power to live for you and to give you praise and glory, and honor throughout all the days of our lives. For we pray it in the worthy name of Jesus and for his sake. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 The revelation of Dan and Ephraim. Look closely, if you can, at the map. At where these two tribes are situated. They are smack in the middle of the Canaanite nation. God told Joshua to destroy them. Instead, they entered into treaty with them. God told Joshua, by the way, Joshua belonged to the tribe of Ephraim or Joseph, if you prefer And when Joshua got into uh, Canaan, his people were surrounded by the Canaanites. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just so that you don't get confused, you're asking already, who is, Joshua, who is uh, Ephraim and who is Manasseh? Manasseh and Ephraim were the sons of of Joseph born in Egypt. Okay? They were the sons of Joseph born in Egypt. Or in other words, they were the grandsons of Jacob. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. When the Lord your God brings you into the land where you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gersesites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Pezzarites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. In other words, God is saying, look, those nations that you're going to overthrow or destroy or disperse, they are mightier than you. So you know when you have destroyed them or defeated them that it was not you, but I used you to do it. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, what will God do? Deliver them over to you. You shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. What does utterly mean? Completely destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Now that sounds like a wicked God. That God would have no mercy on the Canaanites. But ladies and gentlemen, I want us to recognize God always has a reason for what he does. God is not arbitrary. God will never destroy a people unless and until he has given them the opportunity to repent or turn away from their sin. Yeah. So God says to the children of Israel, you shall make no covenant. Don't have an agreement with them. And show no mercy nor shall you make marriages with them. 
You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't seem to work too well these days. We tell God what we want, like Samson, go get her for me. It doesn't matter what you think, God. I love her. I want her. So you better get her for me. Well, you and I remember very well what happened to Samson. His eyes got dug out and eventually died under a rubble of concrete because he chose to do his own thing. Well, God is warning us. For they will turn your sons away from doing what? From following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. Ladies and gentlemen, when we turn our hearts and our minds away from God, to worship other gods. It kindles something in the heart of God. Yes, God has a heart. It kindles something in the heart and mind of God and puts regret in there so that it develops anger. God does not want to be angry with you, but once you turn your back on him and start to serve other gods, he will get angry with you and the Bible says will destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their what? Their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their carved images with fire. Now I want you to follow me very closely, ladies and gentlemen. Because this message is going in a particular direction. It is one that you and I need to pay very close attention to. Because some of us think just because we go to church or attend church services that we've made it. We have a ticket to heaven. Well, according to the scripture, that's not how I understand it. Verse 6 says, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. Do you know who you are? A holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you. What did he do? He chose you to be a people for himself. A special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Can you imagine that there are so many people, I'm told, today we are a little above 7 billion people around earth. Yet God chose the few of you to be his chosen people. He chose you to be his treasure on the face of the earth above everybody else. What a thing. What a thing. You are not a Biden. You are not a Trump. You are not a McConnell. You are not a, a, a Pelosi. You are a child of the living God. Amen. Amen. He's above all. Yes. And he has chosen you. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18 do not be yoked together with unbelievers. This is the Bible speaking. Amen. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Can you find something that God and the devil has in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? 
What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? Now, church, I want you to recognize the word that keeps coming up all the time, idols. For we are the temple of the living God. Amen. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hallelujah to God. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to recognize that God is not willing to exchange idols with himself. No. No. Just because you can create something nice, whether it's with your hand or maybe pouring iron in some, some cast and making it look nice, that does not take the place of God. Amen. Amen. By the way, later on I'll show you that whilst the ancient folk built things with their hands, wood, iron, steel, and other things to worship, that doesn't mean because we don't do it these days that there are not idols among us. Watch it now. Watch it. Verses 17 and 18 says, Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Amen. God does not want to see his people among those who refuse to obey him. I, I, I love the text, uh, Aja. John, I think, 15, verse 14. If you love me, keep my commandments. You don't tell God what to do. You don't say, well, Lord, we'll do that, but uh, we, need, we, we need to adjust this one here. God is not asking us. You go through the Bible. God does not ask us to do anything. He tells us what to do. Amen. So come out from among them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be what? A father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says Lord Almighty. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah, my friend. Let me tell you something. Whether you're a man or a woman, it makes no difference. God is your father in heaven. You know, sometimes we see a lot of, well, I'll be, you'll be my son as if God doesn't have daughters. By the way, did you know that God sometimes refers to himself as a woman? Oh, yeah. He says he gives us uh, breasts to suck on. Men don't have breasts to suck on. Yeah. So God Wants you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, when he created Adam and Eve, he made them as one. Amen. Yeah, in the home, the husband, since sin, has become head of the household. That doesn't mean boss. That means, ladies and gentlemen, he is the priest of the household. Amen. He is to lead his family to God. That's right. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Run away if you must. Don't cleave to them. You know, sometimes we think it's okay to marry, what was Samson's girl's name? Delilah. Delilah. It's okay to marry Delilah. Look at what Delilah did. Ladies and gentlemen, Delilah, my understanding is she didn't do this because she didn't love Samson. But when you place yourself on the grounds of the enemy, that's what he's going to do to you. And so I want us to understand, friend, don't cleave to them. Don't covenant with them. Don't compromise with evil. There's nothing. The devil doesn't look anything like God. All the devil wants to do is to destroy you. But thank God for his grace and mercy. The Bible says 
It's renewed every morning. Amen. Great Amen. is thy faithfulness. Amen. Yeah. Before we go any further, let's address the question. What is an idol? What is an idol? I don't know how well you can see on the screen here that today here's some, what some idols look like in today's world. Yeah. For some people, Elvis Presley is their idol. Yeah? Now, ladies and gentlemen, mind you, there's nothing wrong in appreciating Elvis Presley, the way he danced, the way he sang. There's nothing wrong with that. But to have him looking as if he's God or above God, uh uh. Neither should you appreciate Michael Jackson. As such, are the Beatles. No. Moving from right to left in the middle of, 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 of your screen, you, you may notice some people admire music and their cars and the fact that they can have so many different guns at their home. Not too long ago, we're told that a couple of kids, a nine-year-old, I don't know if it was a three or five-year-old, were playing cowboys, I guess, hide and seek, and the nine-year-old shot his younger sibling. Oh, my friend, we have to be so careful. These are not things that we should set up as the same as God or above God. My car simply is able to take me from hither to yon. Yes. That's all it does. Sometimes when I see the price of a car, I ask, do they feed you in there? Do they pay your mortgage? A car can't do anything. It doesn't matter what kind of car you have. It doesn't take you to Mars or to Venus or to some other planetary object. No. It's all the same. And I'm not suggesting, friend, just because I can't have a beautiful car like yours, I'm not suggesting that having a beautiful car is sinful. No. What it is is that we never set it above God. We thank God for having it. Amen. And then there are some churches, when you walk into it, you see images of Mary, images of St. Peter, images of St. Paul, all kinds of different images. And we are supposed to bow to them and ask them to, 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 to do things on our behalf that only Christ can do. Mm, My friend, those are some of the idols we have in our lives today. Today we may be able to place modern idols or idolatry into four categories. One, wisdom. Because we have social media, we think of ourselves as so great that people say we are gods. Our ladies and gentlemen, we can't take our, our, our eyes, our thoughts away from the news media. Amen. We can't take our, our, our attention from the New Age movement. We can't take our attention off of tradition. Tradition is all that counts. For example, we've been going to church all of our lives on Sunday. Therefore, that must make it right, seeing that my mother and father did it, and their parents before them did it, and the parents before them do it, it must make it right. Ladies and gentlemen, my Bible says, in the times of those ignorance, God winked at. Yeah. I heard somebody said, all Catholics are going to hell. Not true. All Catholics and all Baptists and all Adventists are not going to hell. 
Ladies and gentlemen, those who are going to hell are those who know the truth but refuses to follow it. Even science. Some people use science and take science as if it's God. Science can't go wrong. And therefore science must be right. What about science that is so right? Science talks about some things that were 15 billion years old. Where were you 15 billion years ago? You don't know that. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, I'm not opposed to all science. Uh, some science is incredible. Uh, they, 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 uh, some of those folk, they, they know such great stuff. I follow them. Oh yeah, I watch the Hubble, the photographs that Hubble returns. It's marvelous. But ladies and gentlemen, let's remember what Hubble spacecraft is returning to Earth today is what God made many, many years ago. Amen. It's our God who did it. That's right. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we think so much of academia because you may have a high school diploma or a, a college bachelor's degree or master's degree or a PhD, you think yourself to be so much, you are puffed up and you think you are above God and the world. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, if God did not put breath in your nose or your nostrils today, you would be six foot under. It is he who gives grace. And so therefore I want us to understand all of these things can become idolatrous. So be careful. Number two, power. Politics, the politicians. They think of themselves so highly. Been told that for about two and a half months now, the House passed legislation to support the poor, the needy. But the Senate has it sitting on their desk and would not even look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? Today we are told that by the end of this month, about 20 million people may be out of housing, may be thrown out. The thing is, if those politicians were thrown out of their own homes or were not given the office space in Congress where they could even sleep in, then they would understand what poverty is all about. Instead, they see themselves puffed up. They are big, they are huge. They have, they have guards around them protecting them. And so why should they care about you and me? Warfare. There are people, ladies and gentlemen, countries, even the United States, because we have so many uh, uh, ships, carriers, and submarines, aircrafts, we have all kinds of things that can destroy. We're told, ladies and gentlemen, that we have so many atomic and hydrogen bombs that can destroy the world over and over and over. And you ask yourself, then why do we have it? Because if we bomb Russia with a hydrogen bomb or an atomic bomb, guess what? By the time our, our bomb is halfway to Russia, they're sending theirs to us. You can't destroy it. And so we think ourselves to be puffed up. Gangs. There's so many gangs out there. You're the leader of a gang or you're a member of a gang and you feel that, you know, you are it. 
I'm told that there are so many of them in Chicago. I'd love to visit Chicago, but I'm afraid of the place. Come on, guys. Let go of these things. Life is not about you. It's about God. Amen. He's the one who created you. That's right. And of course, there are cliques, even in the church. Oh, yeah. You thought the church was not part of it? Then there's mysticism. Church organizations. I read a story one time of someone sending an evangelist to the church. An evangelist got there, he started to talk to the church board about how, getting, how to get ready for the evangelistic series. And uh, some of the church members said, we really don't need this. And the pastor asked why. Their response was, because our church is perfect now and you're seeking to bring imperfection into the church. And that's not what we want. Let me tell you, church, your perfection is like filthy rags before God. Don't you think of yourself as being so holy, so righteous. God needs to clean you through and through so that you may become what he wants you to be. Someone said, I am thankful to God that I'm no longer what I used to be, even though I am not what I ought to be. Oh, my friend, because you may have a title, you may be the Job's, is it Job or Job, whatever they call the guy, Job, or Amazon's uh, CEO, or, 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 or Microsoft's, Big, big boy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Just because you happen to have a title, somebody addresses you as doctor, that doesn't make you anything. It doesn't change who you are. The only way you can have a difference in your life is if you've met with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Some of us have authority. You may be the mayor. You may be the governor. You may be the prime minister. You may be the president. You may be king or queen. Let me tell you something. Let your authority be subject to God. You may have achieved. You may, may have attained awards. Don't let that fool you because, friend, I want you to know those things cannot take the place of God Almighty. The third thing is wealth, materialism. Yeah, the United States believes a lot in materialism. Forget the term that is used. Uh, no, not materialistic. Uh, on, on Wall Street, we have a way that they call it. Um, nevertheless, I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that regardless to where you fall in the upper echelons of society or at the bottom, it does not change who you are. Your material wealth does not make you somebody. Just because you have tons of stocks doesn't, you, you, you want to take that in the place of God? Mercy, money. Leisure, recreation, gluttony, vacations. You know, some people can go on vacations, I mean, places that you've never heard of. And because they can do it, they feel so puffed up. Entertainment, they can go just about anywhere. Pleasure, they can have pleasure. Invite people to their homes. Alcohol and drugs. All of these things, friend, instead of making them a God, let me tell you, they're actually helping to sink you into the bottomless pit of hell. Finally, I want you to know, celebrities, some of us can't do without sports. The last four months, you heard people crying out, 
There's no sports, no basketball, no baseball, no football. I mean, people are crying. That's what they want. That's what makes them who they are. Well, let me tell you something, my friend. God would allow you to have all of that, but let me let you know that it doesn't do a thing for your salvation. Movie stars, oh my, we, we, we can't do without them. We, we can't talk without mentioning Denzel Washington. We can't talk without mentioning, tell me who somebody. I mean, there are so many of them. I don't remember their names, Julia Roberts perhaps. I mean, they're, they're fine actors. But ladies and gentlemen, they should not come first in our lives. There's beauty. Oh my, I love to see a beautiful woman. I love to see a handsome guy. I love to see beauty. But ladies and gentlemen, there actually there's beauty all around us. Okay. Even in the flowers. Okay. Even in the trees. Even in the plants around us. There's beauty. It should not take the place of God. No. Fashion should not take the place of God. Sex should not take the place of God. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, those things can become idols to us. But I say God should come first. Amen. In fact, Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says, Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my friend, don't let God's wrath come on you. God is kind and merciful and loving, patient. But let me tell you something, a day will come when that patience and love and kindness and and grace is going to disappear. And he's going to pour his wrath upon the earth. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No one can serve what? Two masters. Two masters. Yep. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. I, I, I just want you to understand this, my friend. Now, mammon here is money. But let me tell you, who directs money on earth is the devil. You cannot serve God and the devil. You cannot serve God and money. Ladies and gentlemen, the money that you have in your possession today, God allowed you to have it. And by the way, some of you have it without returning to him a tithe and an offering. God demands it. He's not asking you. He says, you have robbed me. Some ask, how have we robbed you, God? He says, in tithes and offerings. You need to return to God what is his. Because without him, you would not have a penny. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, Know that you cannot serve the both of them. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. And I wish you would take a good look. Especially at the left uh, graphic at the bottom of your screen. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith. And pierced themselves with many sorrows. See this guy on the left. They're dangling dollars in front of him. And he is willing to jump into a precipice. Trying to get him. Yeah. To get him. One guy already missed. You notice his legs down there. He's falling. This guy isn't so careful. Maybe this guy was not careful enough. I'm going to try myself. Ladies and gentlemen, the other guy grabs a bag of money and all he can think of is love of money. 
Well, my friend, some of us are piercing ourselves with sorrows just because of money. I have one car. My neighbor has two. Why can't I have two, Lord? And so I'm going to do everything, including trying to steal from my neighbor to have a second car. Friend, that's not the way it should be. Here's how the Bible describes our behavior. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. We are treacherous. In other words, we are people that cannot trust each other. We are rash. We don't sit to think of anything. As long as we think it's not about us, I don't want it. We are conceited, thinking about ourselves only. Lovers of pleasure. Yeah. We want to see the new movie first so we can boast to our friends. Man, I saw that movie last night and it's great. Oh, I went to that dance. Oh, I went to that party. Oh, boy, you are missing out on life. I'll never forget when a neighborhood friend of mine, young lady, we had not seen each other for about a year. She knew I had been baptized into the Christian faith. And so she met me and she said, hey, how are you doing? Where have you been? So I, I, typically I just go to church. He said, you're still in this thing? You haven't even gone to bed with me yet and that's where you are? Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be lovers of God, not lovers of pleasure. John 4, 23 says, but the hour is coming yes. and is now here yes, it is. when the true worshipers mm -hmm. will worship the Father, how? In spirit and truth. Amen. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Amen. <clears throat> it's not good enough for God, friend, that you go to church or attend church services. He wants people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Your heart must be in it. Your all must be committed to him. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 and we're coming to an end. But to us there is but one God. The father of whom are all things. And we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ. By whom are all things. And we by him. Yes, friend, it is in him we move, breathe, and have our being. Yes. Without him, we would be nothing. Someone says that without Christ, we would be like ships without a rudder. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without Christ, I wouldn't even be a ship. I'd be nothing. And so today, we often seek many things in the world that we may not need. However, it is not so much what we search for, but what comes first in our lives. Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom of God above what? All else. And live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. He may not give you everything you want. He may not give you everything you desire. But he's going to give you all, everything you need. Yes, and so, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember, seek God first. Yes. Let him be that person in your life that becomes everything. Amen. By now, you may be asking, what does all this have to do with Dan and Ephraim? Mm. Let's check it out. Genesis chapter 48, verses 8 and 9. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons. And said, who are these? And Joseph said to his father, they are my sons whom God has given me in this place. Yes. Now I don't know why Genesis puts it this way. Because really I had to go down to verse 8 and then come back to verse 1. 
Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons. And Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on his bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you, I want you to follow this very carefully, very, very carefully. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Now, do you understand this? Jacob is saying, although Joseph... I have 12 sons, biologically. However, I want you to know, as of today, Manasseh and Ephraim are mine just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. So in other words, Jacob is saying, I'm going to have 14 tribes, rather than 12. Yeah. Your offspring whom you beget after them. Follow this now. Your offspring whom you beget after shall be yours. Mm -hmm. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. You know, and quite frankly, I was joking, kind of. I, I've told my son, that uh, his first four children were mine. Uh, he can have others if he wants, but the first four was mine. Um, and that is what Joseph, Jacob is saying to Joseph here. I don't care what you say. You can have more children if you want. But these two boys, they're mine. They're mine. And so, in other words, had things gone the way Jacob wanted it, there would be how many tribes? 14, 14 tribes instead of 12. Remember now, he told Joseph that whatever other children he, Joseph, might have would carry Joseph's name. But these two would be considered as if they were Reuben and Simeon's brothers. Yes, consequently, Watch how Revelation chapter 7 speaks of the 144,000. It is very interesting. We're coming to the revelation of Ephraim, Dan and Ephraim. Watch this now. Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 to 8, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till all have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. And of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. By the way, I, 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 just an interesting fact. Reuben is the first son of Jacob. But did you know the tribe of Judah is the largest, the most powerful, the strongest? Indeed, it is through the gates of Judah you and I are going to march into that city. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 
12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. I will not be critical of you for missing it. But here it is. You may have missed it. Manasseh is included in the 12 tribes. Was Manasseh one of Jacob's biological sons? No, he wasn't. Who was Manasseh? Remember, Manasseh was one of the two sons Joseph brought to his father. And yet, he is one of the 12 tribes of Revelation chapter 7. But Ephraim, whom Jacob favored most, is not there. Neither is Dan. The question is why? <laughs> In our next presentation, God willing, we will find out why. You may want to do some research of your own and let me know what you have found. Why is it that Dan and Ephraim were not? Now, Dan was a biological son of Jacob. He was not counted as one of the tribes in, the, in, in, in Revelation chapter 7. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you want to know why. We will find out. I could tell you much more today, but no. We'll stop there. I pray that you would have understood today, however, the idolatry that God hates and why he hates idolatry. We'll talk a little more about that next week, God willing. In the meantime, please look to God and see what he says. Serve him with all your heart. And then, friend, May it be that you would choose him and him only. One of the commandments in our children's story says, Thou shalt have no other gods before, before me. Amen. That God says that, and I, I, I believe he means, you won't have any before me, during the way you have me, or after me. There's none like him. And so, friend, I encourage you, as Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God will be with you, my friend. Let him be your guide. Let him be your friend. Let him be your savior. Let him be your redeemer. Let him be your father. Let him be your God. And your life will be different. Father in heaven, we recognize that today, you are our God. You have chosen us to be your people. Help us, O oh Lord, to be the kind of people you want us to be. And that in our lives we would reflect your glory. And then, Father, men and women near and far would come to know you through us. Whom to know is life eternal. Then come save us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. Again, remember to go to our website, starvalleychurch.org, and you will find all the things that you need there. In the meantime, remember you can call us, text us, email us. God bless you and your family. Until next week, God be with you. Take care. Watch over yourself. Remember, the virus is still around, so be very careful. Bye.